Make sure to follow the game on Steam to hear when we're doing free demos, player surveys, when we're on sale and other exciting updates. Hi and welcome to Broom Master, our beer broom simulator. I'm Liddell, pronouns they, she, part of the community team here at Rock Digital. Today we'll be showing you a little insight into our simulation game about home brewing, Broom Master. Broom Master uses realistic chemistry simulation and lets you brew your own beer, create recipes, enter competition, unlock equipment and teaches you the process of brewing in an authentic way. I'm joined today by Isabel from Rock Digital um, and Kenny Gold from the founder of Hot Culture. Today we have a ton of stuff to talk about. Whilst we're brewing beer, we'll be talking about the making of Brewmaster, Hot Culture and what they do, the craft beer scene and what events you can find and tons of other stuff. We're also joined by Ellie, a designer from a rock digital team who also works on Brewmaster. During the stream, she should be behind the scenes playing the game, brewing a beer while we talk, so a big thanks to her as well. Ellie, if you want to give us a nice slow tour of the brewing space and the tasting room while we do introdu introductions. Isabel, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Isabel. I'm an associate programmer on the project, so I've been doing a lot of code behind the scenes to make this game work. Thank you. And Kenny, thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to give an intro to yourself, Hop Culture, and Next Glass? Sure. Uh, I'm Kenny Gould. I am the founder of Hop Culture. We are a digital beer magazine, hopculture.com. Uh, we're on Instagram at hopculturemag. Uh, we were acquired by a company called Next Glass, which also owns uh, Untapped. Uh, at Untapped, it's a beer rating app. Uh, which you can get on your phone for iOS or Android. And we also run Beer Advocate, beeradvocate.com. Um, just the one-stop shop for all things beer. All things beer. Amazing. Yes. Absolutely amazing. So we're going to just hop straight into it. Little pun. Little pun. Ooh, that was clever. <laughs> So Brewmaster is an authentic beer brewing simulator that takes you through all the steps of making beer. Do you need any previous experience in brewing beer to play Brewmaster or can you play it as a complete beginner, Isabel? So you don't need any experience whatsoever. Brewmaster will guide you through all the steps to making your first beer, teach you everything you need to know. And even after you've completed the tutorial, if you still don't really know what you're doing, there's plenty of stuff in the game that will help you. We've got articles in Brewpedia which will explain brewing terms to you or what a certain piece of equipment will do, along with providing an easy to follow recipe for you to follow and make a beer. Amazing. So can you talk us through some of the steps of making a beer in Brewmaster? Yeah. Do you know so them? <laughs> so it's complicated making a beer but um, we've tried to simple it down uh, as much as possible so there are two recipes you can follow in brewmaster one makes an extract beer and one makes an all grain beer so extracts tend to use malt extract and steepable malts to make it whereas all grain it uses grain to make the beer um, so to start you put some water in a container and heat that up with the extract method within this water you will add all your malts and steepable malts to it whereas with the all grain you will use that water to pour it onto grain to create mash so after you've done those steps they will give you wort which is kind of a sugary water that's produced so with this you can then add hops into Hops can be added in at different times to give different bitterness, different flavour to your beer, which will have a result, uh, an effect at beer on the end. After you've added in the hops, you need to let the beer cool because the next step is to add yeast into it. If you leave the brew too hot, the yeast will be killed, uh, which isn't good. You need oh, yeast no. to eat all the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> So once you've added yeast in, we're going to leave it for several days, uh, depending on beer style and the type of yeast. This can be anywhere from a few days to a few months. It really varies. 
But once that time has then passed, you add a bit more sugar in to give the yeast like a second burst of life. And then we're going to leave it alone for a few more days, which again could be days, could be months. Depends how the yeast likes it. Uh, but once that is done, you will then have a beer that should be ready to taste and package. Amazing. Oh, that sounds so good. I can't wait. I cannot wait to make some beers in the game. So, Kenny, what is a craft beer scene like in the US? Oh, wow. Uh, well, I'll put it like this. In 2012, there were about 2,000 independent craft breweries in the United States. Today, uh, almost a dec decade later, there are uh, just over 9,000. So um, there's been huge explosive growth, I think, I read a statistic the other day that 92% of American adults live within 10 miles of a independent craft brewery. So the scene here has just been explosive over the last decade or so. Um, any neighborhood you go to, any city in the United States, you're going to be able to find a craft brewery and participate in the, the craft beer community. So it's oh my a, gosh. Yeah, hugely dynamic scene over here. Yeah. That's like any time you turn, you can go in a walking distance and just find a lovely little brewery. Um, how do you think it differs to the UK? It's a really interesting question. Um, there's there's a couple ways. I think you know over here across the pond, we have um, our country is much much younger, um, and so I think that you look at a lot of the European brewing traditions, and they tend to be much more traditional because they've existed for hundreds and sometimes thousands of years. And so there's less room for experimentation because uh, the right way to brew beer is the way that it's been done for hundreds or thousands of years. But in the United States, because our scene is, is so much younger, I think yeah. there is that homage to tradition, but I think brewers here are much more willing to get very experimental and try all sorts of new and, and wild things and really break with that tradition a little bit. So um, that's one of the ways I think that our system is, is different over here. The scene over here is maybe a little different than something you might find in the UK or in Europe. So would you say, so we know it's gaining massively in pop popularity over in the U S and I think over here as well. Why do you think that is? Um, why do I think the scene is, is growing just around the world or in the U S specifically? Mm, okay. Let's start U S specific at first. Okay. Or do you want, or do you want to do whole world? Uh, I mean both, but I think there's a social element to beer, yeah. right? Um, going back 10,000 years to the agricultural revolution when, when people first started cultivating a lot of the grains that you would use to make beer. I mean, beer for, for thousands and thousands of years has been a way to bring people together. And I think, uh, especially with COVID keeping people inside for the last two years, um, people have realized more than ever the importance of coming together of social interaction and engagement. And so having a, a local neighborhood brewery or a local neighborhood pub is just a really great place to come together, whether you drink or not. I think I've yeah. gone to breweries, I've seen kids, I've seen pets, I've seen um, all types of people from all different walks of life just coming together to enjoy each other's company and, and be social. And I think that in the last couple of years i mean even before covid um that's a really attractive proposition right like having a a third space to really gather and um, spend time and it's also for brewers it's a really cool thing it's a peaceful profession um you know it's uh you have your stressful days a lot of my friends who are brewers will tell you it's no walk in the park and it's no romantic thing but compared to a lot of the ways you could be spending your time um it is at the end of the day uh a pretty attractive proposition i think so um I, i'd point out those things i'd say those are are two of the reasons i i think beer in the last couple of years especially has become much more uh popular 
I think I think I would agree with you. Like definitely because of COVID and wanting to spend more time with people and the social aspect. So yeah. Um so we've partnered with some great bands on Bit Brewmaster, including Beer Advocate, Hop Culture, and Untapped. And Kenny, lovely you. You are involved in all of these. Can you tell us a bit about each of these and what they're about? Sure. So um, I'll start with Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate was founded over two decades ago by two brothers, the Alstrom brothers, and they were really at the forefront of the the craft beer movement. I mean, this was yeah over two decades ago. I was uh, still walking around in in diapers at that point. So uh, they they really kind of saw early what was coming and they created Beer Advocate, uh, beeradvocate.com, if you want to check it out, as a way to, um, as a way for people to just connect uh, online over a shared hobby. And they were really the first people to do that. And so over the years, Beer Advocate has taken many different forms, but they have a really strong social following at this point. If you go to the website, you can create a free account and um, hop onto the forums and talk with people around the world about really anything that has to do with beer, whether it's a beer you tried that you really liked or a home brewing technique or uh, where to find certain ingredients. Um, So there's a hugely robust community of hobbyists and home brewers and people who are just interested in in chatting about something that they love. So um, Beer Advocate also threw a a festival for very many years um, that's still going on called the Extreme Beer Fest. And they were really the first people to celebrate that um, spirit of experimentation that I think American breweries in particular have been known for. So they had a beer festival, but instead of just inviting, you know, a bunch of local breweries, they were really the first to invite people and say, we don't just want any beer you're making. We want the craziest beer that you can make, the most extreme beer that you can make. So um, I remember going in 2014 um, and I tried a beer that had a boar's head in it. I tried a beer that... uh, was like 20% alcohol by volume, whereas most beers are, you know, five to eight. Um, I tried, I tried the spiciest beer I've ever had. Um, I couldn't breathe. It was so spicy. Uh, That one wasn't as enjoyable for me, (laughs) but um, that's the type of thing that they were really celebrating at the time. And and so they had this hugely uh, popular festival series, um, called the Extreme Beer Festivals that that were awesome. So that's Beer Advocate. Um, Untapped is the world's most popular beer rating app. So I don't know if you have uh, Yelp in the UK. Um, yeah, we have okay. something similar. Yeah. Cool. So it's like that, but for beer. Um, it's, a, it's an app primarily, and you use it to rate and review different beers. Um, millions and millions of people around the world use this app, and so... Um, It's a really fun app just to learn about new beers when you're in a store, uh, especially if you're starting out and you don't know, you know, what to try. You can go and look things up that might look interesting and and see what other people are saying about it. Um, Just connect with people all over the world and and learn together. Um, And it's also gamified, which is super fun. So you get uh, different badges within the app for checking in maybe five IPAs or something. You might get the, the, the uh, hop head badge or something. So uh, that's a really fun element. And then um, there's the company that I started called Hop Culture, which was started in 2017 as a digital beer magazine. Grew very quickly. We threw our first festival, uh, beer festival, kind of on a whim in October of 2017. And the whole thing sold out in about 10 seconds. So oh, wow! Uh, since then, we've thrown 46 more beer festivals since uh, October of 2017. So we were on a schedule at one point where we were doing a, a festival a month all around the United States. And then 
uh, publishing daily. Uh, we still publish daily. It's free. It's online at Hop Culture Mag uh, on Instagram or hopculture.com is the website. Um, yeah, we just all beer all the time. So the three of these companies kind of make up the single largest network of, of beer drinkers in the world. So between the three of them, we, we reach all different types of beer drinkers, whether you're just starting out and trying to learn about beer or you're deep into beer and you want to talk about some really nerdy homebrewing topic. Um, we kind of reach the whole spectrum between the three brands. So, That's so amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Was that good? Was that a good overview? No, that was amazing. Yeah. I loved it. Cool. Okay. I'll let you rest for a second and I'll throw some questions at Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Isabel, um, what does our partnership with these brands mean to Brewmaster? Can you explain how we'll interact with Beer Advocate, Hop Culture and Untapped within the game? So I'll start with Beer Advocate and Hop Culture uh, because they're done in a similar way. So they're featured as sponsors in our game. So you can have jobs and competitions that you can enter, which you know, you'll get cosmetic items at the end and things like that. So they will give you a quest, a job to be like, go and make this specific beer. Uh, so then you'll be able to go and make that beer and send it to, to them. <laughs> uh, so you'll also get cosmetic items from them. So you can place the item around your brewery space and decorate it uh, with some nice brewing glasses. I think there's posters as well that you can stick up around the brewing space which uh, really brightens it up. Um, and then we also have Untapped. So this one's slightly different because Untapped is the app, the rating system. That's the big part of Untapped, rating and the sharing and everything. So w as you progress through the game, you'll be able to unlock the ability to sell your beers. Where the Untapped comes in, they once you submit your beer to sell, they will give you a rating. So you'll using the famous untapped rating system where you'll be able to see, oh, you know, I get this amount uh, of your beer. It will be marked out of that. And each season that you're selling your beer for, that rating can change. It can go up, it can go down if people aren't liking your beer. Oh, wow. That looks so cool. That sounds so cool. It doesn't look, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Jealous, because I haven't seen it, but <laughs> I will. <laughs> Okay, so you mentioned jobs and competitions. How does a job work within the game? So every single month you will get a Brewers Quarterly through the post, which appear in the workshop. You'll be able to go into that and find jobs that you can do. So jobs will be certain conditions that you need to make a beer with. So it'll be like, oh, just make sure the alcohol by volume is less than 5% or something like that. Is simple, like uh, simple targets. So it does allow for the experimentation that Kenny was talking about earlier. So you could make a wacky beer as long as it meets the requirements for that job. You can submit it, and you'll be able to gain rewards such as beer tokens. You can buy new items, new cosmetic items. You'll be able to level up yourself which will unlock more content and you'll be able to unlock cosmetic items as well amazing what about the competitions are they slightly different they are slightly different so a competition will run from spring until winter so you can submit a beer to the competition as many times as you like so you can take it out resubmit it if you've made a better beer so with a competition what you're trying to do is Make a beer that meets a specific beer style. But also, you've got judges' preferences. So, like in a beer competition, you'll the judge might be like, I really like chocolate. So then you're going to want to try and make a chocolatey beer. So the, the, more, the more points you'll get will be based on, you know, do you meet this judge's criteria? So yeah. you might make one beer. It might meet one of the judges' criteria. It might be, I like chocolate and I like it really alcoholic or something like that so if you make a chocolatey beer but it's not really alcoholic you'll have the time frame to be able to 
buy the ingredients to then make it a really alcoholic beer and submit that and that will be a better beer and score higher. And then... Amazing. Oh, well, thank you for those in-depth answers. Okay, Kenny, back to you. Hop culture, untapped, and beer advocate are great online spaces for people to connect and talk about beer. Do you think technology has changed the way people make and share beer? Ooh, yes, I do. And I can explain myself. Uh, I think that um, especially, yeah, in the last 10 years in beer, um, a lot of the proliferation of the hobby has has taken place online and it has taken place uh, on forums like Beer Advocate or um, on apps like Untapped, but also through other platforms like Instagram. I mean, every brewery um, that I can think of, of the 9,000 in the United States that I, of all the ones I know, and uh, it's maybe not all 9,000, but quite a lot of them, they all have Instagram pages now and they, they're all using those pages to showcase their products and uh, just let people know about what it is that makes them special and unique. So um, I think that the ability to connect with people from all over the world, not only from an educational perspective where you can get questions answered um, and you don't need to limit that to just the people in your um, homebrewing group or, yeah. or your circle. I mean, you can go to anyone. You could write to the brewers themselves um, through their, their contact pages or, or on Instagram and get questions answered. I think that has been incredible. And that has been something that technology has facilitated. I also know that um, just in terms of getting ingredients, um, there's a brewery in New Zealand, for instance, where a lot of hops are grown that is making uh, this product called Phantasm. And historically, you would only know about that or be able to get it if you lived in New Zealand, right? But now yeah. there's an opportunity for, for brewers in the United States to get a hold of that product um, that and experiment with it. And, and I mean, without technology, without uh, digital communication, there's no way that historically you would be able to do that. So, yeah, I definitely think technology has facilitated a lot of the conversation and a lot of the connection uh, that has happened around beer. Do you, on the flip side of that, do you think there's any areas of the beer culture that this hasn't happened yet and or where people prefer to do things the old fashioned way? Hmm. Well, I don't know. Beer is so old, right? It's thousands of years yeah. old. You go to monasteries where they're making the same recipes they were making um, hundreds of years ago. Um, and those people probably don't have Instagram. They're probably not chilling on a beer advocate forum. Um, <laughs> and they might prefer to do things the way that they have done. Um, so yeah, I'd say for some of the more traditional breweries or some of the more traditional styles, um, that hasn't been as much of a factor, but, uh, I don't know. There's only, uh, personally, I think there's only one direction to go and that's forward. And so you might have breweries continuing to make beer in the way that they have been doing for hundreds or thousands of years. And that's awesome, but you're not going to stop people also from experimenting. And I think yeah. both contribute to the ecosystem. I mean, both add something uh, really awesome and unique and, um, but that's what makes the industry so cool is that you have all types. So um, I, I think anything that allows more people to take an interest and more people to connect in a positive way uh, is a good thing personally. Um, but um, yeah, there's some people who aren't going to engage with that. And that's super cool too, because then the only way you can, get those products or learn about those products is by actually making the pilgrimage, right? Like going to yeah. one of these breweries or um, visiting one of these breweries out in the middle of the woods. And um, that's always a really special experience too. I think that's, I think that's, it's like one of those 
lifetime things to go and visit one of them in it like if you just happen to see it it'd be like one of those like in my brewing journey I right. went to one of the rarest ones even though I've like learned everything else through technology um I think that'd be like a really good like life story to oh, yeah. have yeah. Oh, yeah yeah and I think you see it you see it in every hobby right like if you're into streetwear there are certain people and certain places where you can go that uh, you've probably thought about it for years and then you finally make it and it's, you know, you have a story around it and that yeah. goes with you. Um, or if you're into, I mean, think of any hobby. It's every place has, or every hobby has these places. And I think beer, especially because it is so rooted, beer is so rooted in a sense of place, right? Um, it's an agricultural product, the yeast and the, grain and the hops and the ingredients that you get um, it, if you're making your product with stuff you're you're getting from around your region um, you're only going to find that there uh, so um, I know in the U.S. we have places like that that are making beer with a real sense of of place uh, terroir it's a wine term yeah. which refers to that special sense of place um, and there are breweries that I've wanted to visit for years and years that when I finally do, it's like, whoa, this is everything I thought it would be and more. Um, oh, which brewery really do you want to visit the most? Uh, <laughs> a shout out to, uh, <laughs> there's a really cool one right outside of Austin, Texas called Jester King, which is on a huge farm. They have goats. And, um, if you go there on a nice day, uh, you know, they have kind of picnic tables set up all around the farm. And so you and your friends can go get a, a beer um, made a lot of times with, with local ingredients and go sit out under a tree on this beautiful farm. Um, it's about half an hour outside of Austin, the city. So yeah, you, know, like you can just walk there. You got to like, you know, drive out there. Um, there's a really cool one in Oregon in the woods outside of Bend, Oregon called the Ale Apothecary. And uh, it's family owned, family run. Um, he, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's good. They forage yeah. a lot of their ingredients. So like the whole family will go out and go find like spruce tips from the forest around the brewery and then end up putting those spruce tips in a beer. Um, and then yeah, they're making beer the old fashioned way. Um, it's super, super cool. But uh, unless you know about it, you know, you're, you might not make that trip, right? You're not going to just walk around your neighborhood and find that brewery because it's in the middle of the woods, yeah. two hours outside the closest city in, in Oregon. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many places like that. And I know in Europe too, there's, there's places like that where, um, getting there is half the fun yeah um talking of making memories isabel do you have any funny stories from the team that have happened during development that we could tell <laughs> oh <laughs> so one of them um so when we we're first trying to figure out the game and we we're trying to figure out how to do recipes uh, one of our team, Matt, he actually made the beer. He made a beer, he came up with this recipe. It was, I tasted it. It tasted okay. It was a little bit bitter <laughs> than he wanted, but it, it still tasted quite good. It was drinkable uh, <laughs> for a first attempt. But we then tried to recreate that in-game. So we were still trying to piece everything together, make sure the whole simulation was working correctly. Uh, when that finally happened, Matt was so proud. He, he tried to name this beer, but at the same time that was going on, his neighbor's house was on fire, apparently. <laughs> so as we were like, oh, what are we going to call this beer? When he was so excited about it, he was like, my neighbor's house is on fire. And we were just like, is, is that what we're going to call it? This... And then he was like, no, no. So for a while, the beer, the very first beer that we made in the game was known as Matt's Neighbor's House is on Fire. 
and in brackets because it was. Um. I think I think that beer should still be in game. Just saying. Um, I do see that. I just could be a bonus beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bonus beer. If you win, <laughs> if you win this competition, you get to make this one. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's happening, everyone. Please don't, please don't quote <laughs> me on that. <laughs> okay. um, how do we simulate taste testing um, in Brewmaster? So tasting was kind of one of the things that everyone was a bit umming and ahhing about because you don't actually get the physical beer, you know? At the end of the game, it doesn't come out the computer screen and you can't you can't physically taste it. There's, there's no beer. Um, so... What we tried to do was recreate it as much as possible within the game. So once you've made a bit, you can go off to the tasting room and interact with tasting taps, which takes you to a lovely sequence where there are some amazing visuals of a beer. So this beer is representing what you have made. So you know how usually you can see the foam head on a beer? We've recreated that. You can see the color of the beer. That's there. You can see the bubbles rising from the beer and it looks really cool. So that's just the visuals. <laughs> we then give you some screens with a lot of detail of your beer, of like how carbonated is your beer, how alcoholic is your beer, as well as trying to show you where you've got all these flavours and flavour notes in your beer so you can get kind of grasp, you know, what kind of flavour is my beer? As well, we kind of give you a range of the styles that we think that your beer could have matched. So it could be that you match really highly to an American pale ale and you were not going for an American pale ale, but you've accidentally made one. We give you a whole range and score you and be like, you've got like say 92% on a pale ale, whereas something else you've only got 64%. And we will then give you like hints and tips and be like, well, to get to this flavor, you need to add, you know, like this different flavored hops and things like that into it to really help you and hint you and push you towards the best start that you really want to make. Oh, that sounds so good. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see what everything's happened, how it's been developed. Like I can see things happening now and I'm like, oh, exciting, exciting. Okay, so tell us a bit about the Brewpedia, Isabel. So the Brewpedia is kind of your go-to of all your information that you possibly want. If you want to know about brewing history, we will have articles that unlock that tell you all about the history of brewing. So you can, you know, brush up on all your beer history, impress all your friends when you go out for beers. Uh, we also provide information on all the ingredients in the game, all the equipment, anything you need to know about that, you know, a little bit of history, a little bit of what it's used for. Um, yeah, and beer styles as well. They will also, you know, will tell you about those, you know, how they came about, what's included with those. Does it get updated as you unlock each material? Yep, so as you unlock more equipment, you'll unlock articles for that. And also, each month in the Brewers Quarterly, you will unlock two articles, which can be on anything from that as well. That's so good. I'm a nerd, so I would love to read all that. I'd be there like, I just want this. I just want to read it all. And I'd be sat like reading the Brewpedia. <laughs> that would be me, like just in the game, <laughs> reading it. No beers being made. <laughs> Reading. Um, okay, Kenny. Um, hop culture covers all sorts of news and events in the beer world. What is your most memorable things? You can name a few if you want. If you can't think of just one um, that you've covered. Wow. <clears throat> well, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, there's just been so much. We've published every single day for the last couple of years. And, and I was uh, <laughs> yeah. about beer long before that. So, I mean, there's something new every day. There's so many incredible stories um, 
coming out of the beer world. I think one of the things that I'm really excited about is seeing just new people come into the beer industry. So I think historically, um, brewers largely have looked like me, um, just white dudes with beards. And uh, <laughs> yes. I, there's been a big movement lately um, to sort of bring more people to the table. And so um, one really cool thing actually that's happening this summer um, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I live, is there's a festival called Barrel and Flow, which is a celebration of black brewers. Um, and so that's awesome, A, that it's in my hometown, um, and B, it's just super cool that it's that it's happening at all. Um, it's being run by my friend Dave Bracey, and uh, yeah, everyone should should check it out. It's, you know, a couple thousand people getting together just to um, – celebrate this really unique aspect of American brewing culture and um, let the world know, hey, you know, everyone's welcome in beer. This is this is something that's, you know, super cool for everyone. So um, that that's that was meaningful to me, um, being able to cover that and talk about that. Um, I think one of my uh, favorite stories was the one I mentioned visiting the ale apothecary out in Oregon. So I flew out to Portland, Oregon, and then got in the car and drove two hours to bend just into the wilderness, into the, the pine trees and, um, you know, saw coyotes and, oh my gosh. Uh, moose and, um, yeah, just to visit this brewery that's making beer in a really special way. And, and I think, Finding stories like that is always really cool. Um, this brewery that might not be making a ton of beer, but they're doing it with intention in a really thoughtful way. Um, that was super cool. Um, and those are the the ones you have to travel for are always the ones I think that that stick stick with me. Um, yeah, there's just been so much in the last couple of years that that has happened in beer um, that's so been so interesting. I wish I could think of like more incredible stories that I could relay. But I would say visit hopculture.com. There's an incredible story every day of some new and interesting brewer. Um, I think... I right, think I you, asked you a really hard question for the fact you did, that you, really you did question. so much, yeah. Well, um, yeah. Especially, like, that's one of the things that we like about hop culture because, um, and plus all the other brands that you represent today, um, you showcase such a wide variety of people um, that are involved in beer and not just, you know, the typical white male, like you said. Um, do you think the face of beer culture is going to change? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, in the U.S. at least, uh, women are the fastest growing demographic within craft beer, um, followed by the Hispanic community. And so I think that to me is super cool. And um, I welcome that. I think, you know, the more people that are involved in beer, the more uh, experiences you bring to the table and, and the more uh, interesting backgrounds that, that come to the table, the more variation you have. And so I think in an industry where people right now are really looking to try new things and, and kind yeah. of break the mold, that's, such a cool part of it. And that only happens when people with different experiences and different backgrounds come to the table. So um, that I do think it's changing. I've, I've seen it change even in the last couple of years. And it's something that I'm excited to keep pushing because I think that's the way we get the best, <laughs> the best beer, number one, but, but also just, uh, you know, you get, you get a bigger community and you get, um, more fun for more people. That's what I say. So, um, definitely I like that. I'm excited about that. Um, I do, I want to give a shout out. Actually, he is a white male, but he is a really important piece of, uh, the hot culture story. And this whole, um, game actually is, uh, his name's Sam Taylor. Um, he's on Instagram as, uh, SPT Sam, and he is an artist that we 
had found back in 2017 uh, through Instagram, reached out to him to see if he'd be interested in doing some art for us. And uh, he, I've worked with him since the founding of Hop Culture. And so a lot of the unlockables that we have in the in this game, the posters and some of the glassware and stuff, um, they were actually designed by Sam. Um, he lives in London, so he's oh. uh, closer to you guys than he is to me. Um, we have never met in person. And so you were mentioning before, like what what are some of the advantages of, of technology and beer? Um, I mean, this is one of them, the fact that I could work with somebody in England every week for the last half decade, never actually met the person, but to be able to build a story together and build a brand together um, and, you know, do art together uh, is something that was only facilitated, only able to be facilitated uh, or was facilitated by technology, right? Um, The fact that we could connect digitally and and work together. Um, So that's been a super cool piece of the hop culture story and, and also something really cool about this project is that it features some of Sam's um, art and um, he is such an integral part of the hop culture brand. If you go and you look at the website or the Instagram and it, you see a lot of color or you go click on the store and you see some really cool merch, I would say 90% of that is, is, uh, is that Sam? our friend across the pond. Yeah. Sam Taylor. Oh. So. Um, well, thank you, Sam Taylor. Yeah. Wherever you are, I'm pretending that like Sam is like just listening to us. He will yeah. probably at some point. Yeah, he's probably out. Yeah. Right now, but <laughs> yeah. when he's, maybe he'll uh, he'll come watch. Oh, that's amazing! Like, just I think that's amazing that literally across the pond, you've got this amazing storyline and you've been able to build hop culture and, and get such an amazing community. So how did it start? Was it just, was it just you who thought of it? Um, I had the idea for hop culture. I'd been working at a digital magazine in New York city called gear patrol. And so I learned how to write uh, there um, for for digital publication. And I remember thinking at the time, um, you know, beer, I think this beer thing has legs. I think we could uh, just do a magazine that was, that was only beer um, and eventually uh, left Gear Patrol. And uh, uh, one of my friends joined me and we, the two of us started Hot Culture together um, just as kind of a an experiment and it, it took off very quickly. Like I said, we started January, 2017. And then by that October, um, when we threw our first festival, the thing sold out in 10 seconds and it was kind of off to the races from there. So I think it was being in the right place at the right time, but also I think um, going all digital at a time when people were realizing, wait a minute, like why are we putting things in print um you know we're wasting paper we can't distribute yeah. it widely um i think only going digital was was a huge part of our success and and we were just kind of in the right place at the right time that's so amazing yeah. i love that story i love l- little stories like that <laughs> like makes my heart swell oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay so isabel um I say that, then look at you, and then I'm like, so I remember. Um, How many beer styles does Brewmaster support? We support loads. I believe it is over 60 now, and every single beer style will have a recipe to accompany it, so you can brew every single beer style that we have in the game. Oh, my God. So how do the recipes work? So the recipes are built as a simple set of instructions that you can follow. You've probably noticed um, in the game by now, there's a little pinned recipe tab, which shows your recipe that you're currently following. So you can set that to be any of the recipes that you want, and you can set it to tick off as you're going along to keep up with the instructions. 
Uh, also, we're adding a feature where you can create your own recipes. Mm. So you'll be able to make your own recipes and do that experimentation that we all love. And, you know, if you make a good beer at the end of it, you can say, hey, look, I've made this amazing beer. I have the recipes to make it. That's going to be so good. I'm excited to see everyone else's recipes. And then, obviously, ruin them because it's me. <laughs> I have never made anything correct. I can't even make, like, a salad correctly. I'll burn it. Don't ask me how I burn a salad. We won't get into it. Um, can you tell us about how we can decorate our brewing space? Yes. There, so in the game, you can buy cosmetic items. There are a ton. Uh, they've all been made by our lovely art team, and I'm just amazed at how pretty <laughs> the brewing space can look. You've got all sorts of things, like tables, sofas. You've got little beer glasses, lamps. Oh posters and signs you can hang up around the room it just it looks incredible so there's a build mode so you can arrange the furniture however you like in the rowing space you can put anything wherever you want if it fits put it over there you want the sofa next to the sink go for it <laughs> you can really make the space your own i heard a little secret that there are pictures of the dev, dev's pets in there. Is this true or is it false? It is true. There are going to be pictures of like, dogs, cats. I think there's a bunny rabbit in there. <gasps> bunny rabbit. <laughs> there's all sorts of pets that are going to be available that are actual pictures from the dev's pets. Oh, my God. I am. Okay. Holding back my tears, holding back my tears. Okay. Okay. Let me change the subject before I start crying. <laughs> Kenny. Okay, Kenny. What is your favourite beer and why? Oh. I, <laughs> you're asking me all the hard questions. This is, I guess, the easy I ones. Think, I think, I think, you know, it's just a casual question. Hey, what beer would you like to drink? Why is it your yeah. favourite? Tell no. me why. I would like okay. 2,000 words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll, I'll give you, um, there's a brewery in the United States in Portland, Maine. Um, confusing because there's also a Portland, Oregon, 3,000 miles from Portland, Maine. But uh, Portland, Maine, okay. um, Allagash Brewing Company, they started, they're an older brewery. They're like one of the, the OG breweries in the US. And they make a beer called Allagash White, which is their interpretation of a Belgian wheat beer. And it is the first craft beer that I tried. Uh, when I was in college, I had a friend who was a senior when I was a, a freshman. Do you guys use those terms? He was a fourth year. I was a first year, whatever the equivalent of that is. Um, is that, and yeah, yeah. Yeah? First yeah. year, fourth year? I don't know. Um, he... He ran a club called Beer of the Week in college where he would um, get two new beers every week and then would get a group together and they would try the two beers and hang out. And so when he graduated, he told me, you know, you should take this over. It's been a really cool part of my experience, just meeting new people and, and trying new beers. Um, but the first beer he ever shared with me uh, was this Allagash White. And I think if you were to come to the U.S. and take a poll of a hundred brewers, I would say probably half of them. It's the first craft beer that they ever had that really made them say, Oh wow. Like this is different. This is different from the, you know, beer I could get at the gas station or, or just everywhere. This is like a real craft beer. This is something with flavor. That's just so unique and, and so well made. Um, and it's funny too, because, now it's one of the best selling beers in the country. But um, if you, we have an interview on Hop Culture actually, where we interviewed the founder of this brewery, Rob Todd. And there was a time where for a decade he was driving around in his own car trying to sell this beer out of his car and nobody wanted it. And then uh, 
now it's one of the best selling beers in, in the country. Um, but I think for a lot of people, it was really the first beer that made them say like, oh, this is beer. Um, this is this is what I could make. It got a lot of people into home brewing, um, got me personally into being really interested in um, narrative and the story around beer, which is why I started a, a beer magazine. Um, but I'll, I'll go with that one. It's it's still, uh, I was actually, I was at a wedding last night and they had it on tap at the wedding. So, oh my God, really? Yeah. That is that is a, a great story for your favorite beer. Like, I like that one. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, that is a good one. I, <laughs> I appreciate that one. That is a good one. Um, okay. So any thoughts on what, I mean, I think this is an easy question. <laughs> Any thoughts on what technology might bring next for beer and brewing after Brewmaster might will launch? Because this is this is technology and brewing. You're asking Isabel this one, right? I don't have to answer this one. I'm asking both. Oh wow! <laughs> Isabel, oh, yeah. I have some time to think. <laughs> so Isabel, you can go first. Wow, uh, <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> Uh, well, Brewmaster is obviously going to be revolutionary. Uh, <laughs> everyone's going to play it. Um, I, I really think, yeah, technology can bring us a lot closer. And, you know, being able to, say, exchange recipes and figure out how to brew this beer, how to import all the hops, like Kenny was saying, from New Zealand, like, with their technology, you can just, you know, send someone an email, be like, hey, can I buy some hops and things like that? That's really, you know, advancing us forward. And who knows what beers we can create now? Yeah. Kenny? Um, interesting. I'm going to go with, there are some new technologies now that I've seen around, um, like, de-alcoholization, for instance. So you can make a beer um, and then pull out the alcohol and you get that same beer, but now it's non-alcoholic. And I think there are um, so many people who like the taste of beer or might want to go out and be social, but um, don't drink for whatever reason. They're pregnant, they're driving, they're, they have a big race the next day or something. But uh, to be able to have something available for them in tap rooms and in pubs, I think uh, is, is super cool. And something that I've seen kind of becoming more popular in the U S lately uh, and the technology required to extract the alcohol in a way that leaves the full profile of the beer, all those, you know, nice hot flavors, the body um, that's relatively new. So non-alcoholic beer isn't new, but the technology to, to make it, really well is relatively new. So that's something I'm excited for just because, again, it, it's uh, a technology that opens up beer to a wider uh, group of people, right, who ordinarily, you know, wouldn't maybe go to a tap room because they don't feel like it's for them or there's nothing for them to have there. So um, that's something I'm, I'm super excited about. Okay. Final questions. First one for Isabel. What advice would you give to some first-time Brewmaster players? I would probably say just take your time with it. Try and figure out what you're doing first off uh, rather than just going, barging in, pour everything in a container. You can do that if you want. You may or may not make a beer. Uh, you might make a beer. It might be the best way to do it, but... Just take your time with it. Have fun. Have some experimenting. You know, if, if you don't make a beer, there are plenty of tips and hints to be able to correct your beer and be like, oh, hey, if you make this again, add a little bit of more, you know, alcohol into it to the sugar with the yeast to get the alcohol up. Uh, and then, yeah, you can really do whatever you want with it. You can experiment and go absolutely crazy with any kind of style, any ingredients that you would like to thank you so much and kenny do you have any advice for someone who's looking to get into craft beer yeah just drinking it or um brewing it um 
understanding it, finding out what they like, a good yeah. place to start? Sure. I'd say the thing I hear most is like people, people are always looking for somebody else to tell them what's good or not. Um, when people come to my house and um, they open up my beer fridge, they're like, should I try that one? Should I try that one? And to me, the only way you're going to know what to try for you is by tasting it. Um, I think people tend to sometimes be very precious about beer or to really, they really worry, like, am I doing it right? And I would say, throw all that out the window. Just go try a bunch of things, see what you like. It doesn't have to be what somebody else likes. If you taste strawberry in a beer and somebody else tastes, you know, blueberry, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, <laughs> that's cool. They taste blueberry, you taste strawberry. That's great. There's nobody, nobody's judging you. Uh, everyone started somewhere. So just go out and try a bunch of things. And, and once you do that and you take some of the pressure off to be right, uh, and you just allow yourself to really try something and enjoy it or not enjoy it, um, you'll start developing that palette. And, um, that's when it, it becomes really fun is once you can say, Oh, I like sour beers or I like pale ales or I like, uh, you know, the, the roastier kind of chocolate flavors of a, of a porter or a stout. Um, but it's a very personal thing. Uh, it's very subjective. And so don't be afraid to try things and have your own opinions. Oh, well, thank you both so much. Um, that actually brings our stream to a close. So thank you, Kenny, for joining us and talking to us everything about hot, the, about hot culture and all things beer. Totally didn't get tongue twisted. Um, thanks as well to Isabel for talking us through the game. And finally, thank you to Ellie. He's been playing the game behind the scenes for us while we chatted away. If you like the look of Brewmaster, please make sure to wishlist it so you'll be the first to know when it releases and you can try the demo that is available right now. You can sign up to our Brewmaster mailing list, which is on our Steam store page. And also on our Steam page, you can find the invite link to our Discord. In our Discord, you can talk about Brewmaster, brewing and gaming. I'm there, so you can come talk to me and we'll have loads of fun. Um, make sure you, chop out, you can check out Hop Culture as well, which is on our socials. It'll be linked below and you can see what they're up to as well. Thanks and happy brewing!